Welcome, welcome back to the Carl Vibe podcast. Now, I've been doing a lot of boots on the ground investigating and researching a, a long time ago, a couple of years ago, actually, uh, started going out and exploring different petroglyph sites and in ancient indigenous locations. And over the course of that, I've come across a lot of fascinating things and had personal experiences as well. And over the course of time, I have been able to make some uh, friends and be taught some important things along the path of this journey of trying to understand what these petroglyphs and pictographs and how they connect maybe with uh, the ancient pyramid cultures and mound building cultures and why when I go to these sites, it seems to have effects on my consciousness and my personal life and my spiritual journey uh, through this life as well. And along this journey, I have made some incredible friends, one of which is uh, Greg Yawakia, and he is a, a Pueblo Zuni elder, and he uh, has been helping teach me, and we've just recently made friends, and he has some amazing and validating personal experiences and knowledge that uh, I think that needs to be shared with the world that uh, has been helping inform a lot of what I've been doing, and I'm excited to introduce Greg and his work, as well as his group through the Red uh, Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance and his efforts to try and uh, bring some of this information out to the world, uh, because I agree with him that I think it's time. So without any more waiting, I would like to introduce everybody to uh, Greg Yawakia. Greg, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, doing great with... Uh... 84 degrees outside, you know, I mean, I know uh, a lot of people are covered under the snow, but I'm covered under the sun, which is better, you know, but I'm not going to brag, you know, <laughs> we may go, come and go, you know, we don't know, you know, so anyway, I'm doing great, wonderful, wonderful. So you're over, you're in Arkansas now, right? I mean, Texas, well, ha half and half, Texas, Arkansas, Texas, Arkansas, in Texas, half is in Arkansas, so. No, that, that's over by hope, kind of by hope and in that area, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. See, I lived in Arkansas for a couple of years as a Mormon missionary growing up. And so I lived around some of those areas. So that's uh, that's cool. That's where you're at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of good, got a lot of good places out there. And I, I've i been coming in and out of Texas since 1979. So this is like a home to me. Yeah. You know? So, so where, did, where did you grow up, Greg? And maybe give everybody a little bit of an introduction about your background, and kind of who you are and uh, how maybe how we met. Okay. Well, I am Greg Yawakia. I'm from Zuni Pueblo, which is near the Four Corners. Um, our reservation goes into New Mexico and Arizona. You know, there's no boundaries on reservations. So uh, Zuni Pueblo is one of the Pueblos that was first contacted by Coronado's group, you know, um, they came and uh, it was actually Fray Marcos de Niza and Estebanico along with three soldiers. They came up to Zuni and they made first native contact with the Zunis back in 1641, I believe, or something like, no, it's before that. Uh, but anyway, they contacted Zuni and um, at a place called Hawiku. And, you know, Estebanico was a Moroccan slave that shipwrecked with Cabeza de Vaca in the Florida Keys or somewhere around there. And uh, they followed the Gulf. And when they came to Mexico, Coronado was already there. So mm -hmm. Estebanico, being, being a Moroccan slave, he says, I know how to deal with the natives or I know how to deal with other people. So he went with Fray Marcos de Niza. They came to Zuni and being a big guy, he was kind of bullying the people around and the Zunis got enough of it and they killed him. And when they killed him, Fray Marcos Deniza saw what happened, turned around, went back to Mexico and told a lie saying that he saw seven cities of gold. And when he said that, all the exploration people started coming up north looking for that seven cities of gold. Right. They came to Zuni, there's no gold in Zuni and all that. In actuality, they came out looking for spices, not gold, but spices. Mm. So uh, that's what prompted the exploration. We have a place called El Moro on a, uh, right off the reservation. Uh, it's, it's a national monument. 
And that's where Coronado, Pizarro, and all the explorers that came through signed their name on the on the rock of the rock of the mountain. And that's why they call it inscription rock. Zunis call it Atina, which is inscription rock. They they put their names on there. There was a water hole there that when they came through there, they would water their horses there. So when they did that, they, you know, of course Zunis were friendly at the time to where they would feed them and everything. And they would journey their way, you know, to go further on in exploring. But that was a stopping point for them. And every time they stopped, they would put their name on it, on, on the rock. And it's got Coronado's name on there, Pizarro, and and uh, uh, let's see, who else? All, all kinds of people's up there, all the explorers, you know. But um, we call it Inscription Rock. But anyway, I um, I was, I was um, when I was about two years old, I got lost in the woods. And I was gone for two weeks. When they found me, when an when a elderly sheep herder out there on reservation found me, I was not dirty. I was not hungry. I was well taken care of. And so I, um, I got, he carried me into the, to my grandma's and gave me to my grandma and said, this guy is my grandson. He will, he will take over my position. And I, at that time, I didn't know what was going on. All I remember is riding on his back because, you know, he was a strong man because he carried me about eight miles. This and, is uh, the, the man that found you lost yeah. in the woods? Yeah. He carried me about eight miles and took me home and gave me to my grandma and said, I got to go back to my sheep. So left, turned around, went back out there. Mm -hmm. And um, he, um, over the years as I was growing up, I had a lot of challenges and I actually died three times before. And so at, on the third time, the first time I was, like I said, I was lost in the woods. They thought I was dead at that time. The second time is when I, it was a hot day. I remember it was a hot day and my, my sister goes, um, you need to uh, take a bath, take a bath, take a bath. So I said, okay. So she started my bath water and I got in the bathtub and she gave her in the bath water running. And she was doing laundry too. So when she yelled at me, I didn't answer. And so she pushed her way into the bathroom and I was under the water. I had slipped under the water and water was over my head. But rather than pulling me out, she runs all the way across the, across the yard to go get my grandma. And my grandma came. And pulled me out. And when she grabbed me, I woke up. Mm. I woke up. And I said, wow, what happened? What happened? You know? And and they were trying to tell me what happened. All this. And of course, they told my godfather what happened. So he said, okay, 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 okay. You know? And um, then when I was six years old, going to school at, uh, at um, in Zuni, we, you know, back then we had these big slides, you know? I mean, we had real playground equipment back then. Right. And uh, I, I, we were playing King of the Slide, and I got up. I was I was on the ladder, getting on top, and the guy that was the King of the Slide, he stepped on my hands, and used his foot to push push me push me back. And of course, when he stepped on my hands, I let go. And when he pushed me, I only was holding one hand, so I naturally fell off the slide. When I landed, I hit my head. Hmm. And next thing I remember, back then the ambulance was just like a station wagon. With you know, right. So, I was I was riding, um, and, and you only had a driver. You didn't even have a paramedic or anything like that next to you. So I was I was riding the ambulance. And I remember I was looking at my body. I said, "Wow, you know what's wrong with that guy?" You know, I didn't realize it was me. And when they took me out, took me into the emergency room and everything, I was with it that that body. And I was like afloat watching it. I remember that very good. I was mm -hmm. watching it, and I said, "Wonder what's wrong? Wonder what's wrong with him? He needs to wake up or something." And the doctor looked at his watch. Says, 728, time of death. Seven twenty-eight p.m. Time of death." And I remember they put the sheet over that body, and I said, "Poor guy. Wonder what happened." And they're fixing to put that body into the morgue, I guess. And back then, them old gurneys, you know, 
um, there was a power cord that was running across. And when that gurney hit the power cord, naturally it bounced up and all that. And when it bounced up and down, it collapsed. When it collapsed and went down, I woke up. Hmm. I woke up. I said, whoa, whoa. What am I doing here? You know, but I was too young to really realize what I was doing. But I remember being up looking at that body. And I said, something ain't right. But it was you. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, um, so I said, so naturally, again, they told my godfather and my godfather told his group, his medicine group, and says, well, we got to save him now. We can't, we can't, I mean, this three times already. And we, I mean, he's got to be something special. So I started my training at seven years of age in 1969. And so I started my medicine training and, you know, all these things that they taught me, you know, back then to me, to them, it was not mag uh, magic or it's not secret, you know, and I think, um, I've been asked a lot, a lot about, you know, the medicine man, lot magic, because, you know, psychic surgery is, you know, people say it's magic, but it really isn't. It's harnessing your energy and you can, everybody can do it. I mean, they do it in India. They do it in Africa. They do it in South America, Mexico's in the natives out here. They do psychic surgery. So it's, 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 it's just nothing secretive about it, you know, so. I started looking deep into it. And 1984, I had the opportunity to go to Egypt. And while I was growing up on the reservation, man, I climbed every one of those mountains, sacred mountain. They told us, don't go up there and camp. All them, all them spirits are going to get you. What do I do? I go up there, sleep under the stars. You know what I mean? You tell me not, not to do anything. I, I'm going to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> You know, I was just hard headed, I guess, you know. Um, but as I as I went along, you know, I I really really started experiencing a lot of um uh, I guess I don't know what how to explain it, but it's not magic, it's not uh phenomenon, it's nothing, but I started I started really putting the training that I got into thought, into a thought thinking. Why was I trained to do this? Why was I trained to do that? Why was I trained to do this? So um, climbing those mountains, I saw a lot of pictographs, you know, just like you're doing right now. And so when I went to Egypt, those same pictographs are on there, like the Fibonacci, the, the triangle, the upside down triangle and all that. I kept thinking, why are those up there? They're like, I mean, did they, is this the way of communication? And really it is. Pictographs were done before the Greek alphabet. And it wasn't really, uh, some were communicating, some were teachings. And um, I just started looking into what it was all about, like the Fibonacci, the golden ratio. Why the golden ratio? Why is it clockwise? Why Why on this other Kachina, why is it counterclockwise? And I, I kept thinking until I... You know, heard about the Hopi prophecy about the blue kachina and the red kachina. Blue kachina up north and red kachina down south. Well, blue is female. That's water, spirit. You know, red is the male, uh, mm. you know, fire, energy, you know. And so, and if you put those diamonds on top of each other, the upside down one and the right side up, you know, where it touches, you know, that's the equator of Mother Earth. And that's where both of them spinning. Squ kind of squish it you know that's where the energy squishes right. out and um so i started thinking i said well what, what what does it mean what does it mean and so i started looking into it and then i found out it's it's, it's our merkaba you know and the merkaba goes really deep into what i have been you know looking into and finding out by myself you know we talk about the chakras the chakras oh that's just buddha stuff that's just Asian stuff, but no, it's everywhere. I mean, the natives use the chakra. You know, you got three up, three below. The fourth one is your, what they call the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. That's where the transformation happened. And and with the macabre, the where where the points meet is the fourth chakra, 
That's the transformation chakra. Mm -hmm. And the lower three, you know, again, is the male. The upper three is a female. That's spirit and water. Water flows. That's emotion. It's emotion, right? Water motion. Fire is energy. You know, fire is, you know, the ump, you know, and it's heat. You know, when um, when I say, well, why? what happens at the transformation chakra? is if you get water, you get water and put it under a fire, well, when it transforms, it transforms into steam. But when it cools off, it vaporizes back into water. So, you know, where that, again, that fourth chakra, that transformation, that's where water turns into steam, you know? And But there's a, there, there is so much with that fourth chakra. It's like the zygote of a human, human, you know, pro, uh, you know, process of being created, you know? Yeah. Uh, the fourth chakra is where the embryo becomes a fetus. You have the and, same Fibonacci, right? Yeah. So you're saying that this, these petroglyphs and pictographs that we see, uh, the Kachina or the, these spirals that are going yeah. clockwise and counterclockwise, those yeah, actually... But, uh, usually because, because they're spinning, the top is spinning clockwise. The mm -hmm. bottom is spinning counterclockwise. Right. I think you have one picture of one of your videos that showed those to Katinas put sideways and their feminiches are up there with different rotation. Yeah. Because, but if you flip them up, this one is still clockwise and this one becomes counterclockwise. We put them back up right, still does the same thing. So, right. So, you know, and, um, and then, then I started saying, okay, that's just a little bit about the Fibonacci stuff. Then I started looking into the tetrahedron of the earth. And I said, okay, there's a blue kachina, there's a red kachina. You know, it shows them the, the Hawaiian volcanoes, the South, South America volcanoes, the Tongan Island volcano. You know, it shows all the volcanoes up, and it's all connected to the tetrahedron of Mother Earth, you know. Right. And at one point, I was, uh, uh, I read, um, Scientists are saying that uh, the Earth pole is going to be off by four degrees. When that happened, I said, Mother Earth's going to do something to correct that. And sure enough, there's a volcano eruption in Tongan Islands under the ocean. The volcano erupted. And then the volcano erupted on the Hawaiian. Now, the big volcano in Hawaiian started mm -hmm. erupting. And it balanced itself. The Earth balanced itself. Right. You know, so Mother Earth will take care of itself. You know, we uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, all this dark, 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 dark. Well, one of the things that I, uh, when I teach Master Alchemy Sacred Geometry, I expose the dark. Why? Because we can overpower the dark. I had, a, I have a lot of people come to me and say, you know, a dark entity came to my sleep last night. I got scared. Da, da, da. I said, well, why did you get scared of it? Don't be afraid of the dark. What's it going to do? Why is God? Uh, he ain't going to hurt you. I said, well, um, I'll, uh, we, were, we were talking to this one lady, and she said, her, her young daughter goes, man, that dark entity came. It picked up a chair, and it's going to hit me with it, hit me with it. I said, why did it not hit you? I don't know. It just stopped. And, I, and of course, the other lady that was with me, she goes, man, if we would have picked up a chair, I would have jumped on that chair and got a free ride, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how we have to look at it. You know, people, fear-mongering is the number one power that the dark has on us. Yes. Well, I don't fear dark. I don't fear nothing. You know, and and we always, we, you know, there's a lot, there's so much things that I, I I want to teach, and and that's why I came up with Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance, because a lot of people, I mean, this is the age of Aquarius. People are seeking, and I hate to say this, but churches have failed, you know, and they more went into conformity and all this, and a lot of people got turned off on it. So people are seeking, and when, when, when I talk to a lot of people, they say, we want to do this. I said, well, it's never too late. It's never too late. You know, um, 
2017 was the last time I I died again. Mm. And when I died, I actually saw myself again. Out of body experience. I was watching him working on me. And I said, wow. Then I realized I'm dead. I looked around and said, I'm dead. My body is down there and I'm up here. I'm dead. So I said, well, where's the great white light people talk about? Nothing. I hope the good without doing the bad on this, what I did in this world, still nothing. Then I said, okay. I cried out to Jesus. With the power, with the blood of Jesus Christ, have mercy on my soul. Forgive me. And that's when a portal opened up. I don't know who or what. I said, come on. Pull me in. And the things that I felt and saw was so amazing that I said, wow, wow, this feels great. And I wanted to explore more, but then they said, no, you can't. I mm -hmm. said, why not? It's not your time. It's not my time, but this feels great. I want to stay here. They said, you can't. I said, why not? It's not your time. So I said, well, what does the father want me to do when I go back? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you <laughs> when people experience heaven, they're gonna want to come back, be a preacher, a minister, evangelist. Well, you know, they want to just get all fired up for the father, you know. But he wants me to do nothing. I said, I don't even go to church, I don't read the Bible. He wants me to do it. He said, Go back and follow the gospel. The gospel. I said, Okay, I don't know what it is, but I guess so. So when I got booted out, I came back. I mean. It's just like, boom, I woke up. All these doctors were just screaming around, around. Boom. My eyes opened up and says, hey, are you okay? You know, but I couldn't talk because I was intubated. I had needles all over me, monitors all over me, and I was laying there all strapped out, you know. And I said, oh, I don't know how. I can talk to them, but, you know, I just say, you know, just kind of nodded my head. I'm okay. And everybody settled down, and they said, no, I fell asleep, and. My sister came in and says, you're going to have to go home with Mama. I'll, cl I'll clean your bedroom. You go home with Mama. And I said, okay. So next day she came in, she brought a Bible. And I remember I bought a Bible in 1980. And this was 2017, 37 years later. Hmm. I said, here, you might need this. And, and I said, where'd you get it? It's on your bed. I said, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I said, yes, it was. I said, no. I looked all over for this Bible. I knew I bought it, but I don't know what I did with it. And Because last time I came home, I, I slept on my bed, and I didn't feel no Bible on me. So said, well, on your bed. I said, oh, okay, okay. Hmm. So very, brand new. It's still wrapped up. So I, I unwrapped it. And when I opened it, you know, opened it, it opened in the middle where the Old and New Testament, Testament separated. When I looked at that first page of the Old Testament, it says, these are the Gospels of Jesus Christ. So I started reading them. And I kept reading it, reading it. What in the world is the Gospel? The harder I thought about what is the Gospel, it never came to me. And then when I finally put it down, everything, I said, I don't know what the Gospel is. It's only love, mercy, and peace. That's it. And I said, wow. Yeah. So, well, he don't want me to be a preacher. He don't want me to, maybe I just have to share the Gospel. So I do. I live it, breathe it, and share it. You know, you know all, all of this has connected full circle. These experiences, these out of body, near death experiences, and then these uh, getting lost in the woods, and then ultimately being raised as a medicine man and going up to these sites has given you a different perspective. Because, like, I I get told a lot, like, oh, the petroglyphs and pictographs—they're just you know ancient graffiti or carvings or whatever. And people don't understand that they're meant to be seen more three dimensionally or or viewed uh, metaphorically and and as part of like the electromagnetic field of the earth that we're supposed to tap into in a certain way. So maybe you can speak to that from all of your lifetime of experience and maybe okay inform, well, inform people about all of your experience and kind of what that what that means to you. Well. Again, my experience is that, is that, you know, I have learned that we, we all have the, I, I just want to say gifts, but the, the energy to do a lot of things that people 
uh, are, are wanting to learn. You know, we heard about remote viewing. Why is the government so spending so much millions of dollars about remote viewing? Anybody can do that. Anybody can remote view. You know, I can. You know, I can teach people how to remote view. And it's just that when I teach, I have to teach who are you first. You know, and... I had a good friend of mine says, I want to stop smoking. I've been smoking for for 50 some odd years. I need to stop smoking. I need to stop smoking. I said, try fasting. Why do I need to fast? Well, fasting, the way I was taught, allows your spirit to control your body. Not your body control your spirit. Because that's where the addiction comes in. So she said, okay. But in the meantime, you can brush your teeth. Gargle with whatever, and then try to smoke a cigarette. Okay. She tried that. It's like drinking orange juice after you brush your teeth. Nasty. Mm -hmm. So that kind of slowed her down. But when she 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 said, I try fasting. It's not working. I get hungry. By I said, well, I said, just try, try, try. And when you put your mind, body, and spirit into it, it will happen. Mm. So she finally got her mind, body, and spirit. She said, I went four, three days. I was going to go for four days. I'll go continue and all this, but I'm afraid I'm going to hurt myself. I said, that's right. But now she put the cigarette away. Came back, put the cigarette away. Her lungs had cleared up enough to where she tried it. I said, there you go. It's a start. You can do anything when you get your mind, body, and spirit together. Yeah. And you're you're involved. And, and when a I lot teach about your mind, yeah. body, Merkaba. Yeah, Merkaba. You know, your mind, body, and spirit. And because in the religion, we are taught only half. Like, you know, they say Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Right. Well, we know who the Father is. We know who the Son is. But who is that Holy Ghost? Well, it's the spirit from from the Father, I said, no, 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 no. Who is that Holy Ghost? Can't be all male. Can't be all male because, you know, the symbol in alchemy for gold is a circle with a dot in the middle. Our energy, uh, I mean, I know I'm going all over the place, but our energy, you know, is formed. You know, it used to be a big question. When abortion came up, well, when does the spirit enter the body? That used to be a big question. Well, I looked at my elders one time. They said, as soon as that, on the zygote, the first day, when the sperm first hits the egg, what's the first thing that develops? A spiral, yeah. The circle. And was it, what's it, why did it develop? To protect the egg and the sperm while it's incubating. So, and our and what's we are taught that our spirit lives in our heart. No. Our spirit is energy or aura. No. Our body lives in the spirit because that's how we were created. When we were created, the first thing that developed was the energy, remember? Mm -hmm. And so now our energy feels out here and we're living in it, our aura. And I teach people how to use, feel their aura, how to manipulate the aura where you can, it can warn you. You can do a lot of things with your energy. You know, you're a battery, positive, coming from the heavens, negative, on the ground, Mother Earth. When you ground, it's Mother Earth taking all the toxicity out of you. But going again, back to that, back to that golden, gold symbol. On alchemy, it's a circle with a dot, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at our aura, we're a circle. Where's that dot at? Where is that dot? Our navel. Right in the navel, yeah. It's halfway, navel is halfway from top of our head to the, to the navel, from, from the navel to the bottom of our feet. It's halfway. Yo. And so, why is it there? So like why? that drawing of the, of the man the that went... Leonardo did is really the depiction of the human body is actually like the core of the apple. And what we truly are is this sphere. 
the uh, the circle or the encompassing. We break that down on that Master Alchemy class. Trivia, yes. man. You right. know, we talk about the elemental square, the uh, the the you know the golden ratio in there, and the, all the points about it, the medals and everything. Yeah, we break that down. You know, but what, what I was getting to is that this umbilical cord is our connection to our mother, our mother's connection to their mother, their mother, 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 mother. You know, it's a female connection part. The male cannot have that. Well, we have an umbilical cord because we're connected to a mother, but the male cannot produce. So to me, the Holy Trinity is father, son, and mother. You know, mm. father, father in heaven, mother earth, and we are in between. Because, again, the symbol of salt, circle with a line on it. Father created you. Mother gave you the breath of life. Where it meets, you. Mm. You know? That so, makes sense. Yeah. A lot of these things we teach because we we have the ability to do, like everybody, even if you learn it, you can do psychic surgery. Psychic surgery comes from foha in the scientific word foha, which is bringing universal energy into earthly matter. Your energy can do that. Foha also teaches you that your energy can control the weather, the elements. That's why Jesus said you can move a mountain with the faith of a mustard seed. You know, right. That's a, I, in in modern de- times they like to use the term manifestation, you know, and and everything. But this you're saying you call this the foha. Uh huh. Gotcha. So this is something that's been known. They act like this is a new thing, like law of attraction and manifestation. But this stuff goes back into the yeah in because indigenous even, cultures for thousands of years. Yeah, even even in the Buddhist culture, um, Shiva. Calls it Johan. It's spelled J O Johan. Right. And scientists call it Foha. And once you learn that Foha, which will open your minds to where you can do it, you can do just about anything. And I know when I was growing up, you know, out in the, out in the Southwest, we get them dirt devils coming like crazy, right? Right. We are told if a dirt devil's coming to us, you lick your thumb. And you stick it out there, and you can move it away from you. Huh. Yeah. I've never tried that. I'll have to try that. I see yeah. them all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. You can move it. I, um, you know, a lot of people say you cannot compare yourself same as Jesus. Well, I think they need to read Second Peter chapter 1. You know, it says we are created like Jesus. Jesus gave us authority in Matthew 10, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 9. Freely I give you authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, and to remove all dark spirits. You can look right. it up. Exactly. You know, and and that's my that's one of my mission to teach. I had a I, I had a my partner. Um, she told me what all she knew and everything. And I said, okay, I would teach you. I would teach you. And first, first test I gave her was there's a real bad storm coming in Arkansas. We got tornadoes and everything, you know, and there was a big storm. It wasn't red, but it was purple. And you could see the tornado in that radar. Hmm. It's coming towards the house. She said, let's go to shelter. Let's go. No, no, no. Your energy is stronger than that tornado. How? I said, go out front of Willie. We have this willow tree out front called Willie. Get in front of Willie. Spread your arms. Split that, split that storm. I can't do that. I said, Moses can split the Red Sea. You can split it. She got out there and did that. We saw it on radar. That storm came and came like a tuning fork, opened up, went right beside the house. Hmm. Right beside the house. She says, wow, wow. 
And then I said, now it's time to heal people. There was a little kid that was on a Miracle Network trip that we met in Freeport, Louisiana. You know, and Mama said that we're on this trip because they told me that he's not going to live past five years old. He's about three and a half, almost four years old, that kid. I said, really? He said, yep, that's why we, we get a trip once a year until he passes. He's not going to live. And he, that little kid just walked up to um, Leslie's her name, just hugged her. He just held on to her for three hours while we're, I was talking to the mother and the grandmother. We we're talking with them. That kid just hanged on to him. Go swim and go swim. No. No, he don't want us to go swim. He just hugged on Leslie. But that kid is now uh, nine years old, racing BMX, surpassed the five-year-old mark. Shows no, no, nothing about his illness. Hmm. And his mother, his mother's on my Facebook. She, she updates me. She says, went to see the doctor. Doctor say he's fine. Doctor say he's going, you know, doctor's biting his tongue, wondering what happened. There was a guy that was sitting next to her. I don't know what happened to me. I just got an emergency room. They're going to have to cut me and find out what's wrong. No, no, no. And she says, I tell you what, he says, you go to your doctor, you get some antibiotics, and you take those antibiotics, you'll be okay. That man went, did this exactly, called us the next day, says, it was a bowel obstruction. I took the antibiotics, and everything went normal. They don't have to cut me no more. I said, there you go. Yeah. You know? So I said, see, you can heal people. You can Your energy can heal people. You just have to use it right. Right. A lady came up to us, a, a, a Mexican. Mexican lady came up to us, couldn't even speak English, was telling us she was just crying because her husband had real bad cancer and everything. She says, I just pray that they take those cancers, tumors out. It's gone. Well, you tell her. I can't speak Spanish. I said, okay. So I was interpreting for her. I said, she said, your husband tumors are gone. Well, he's going to go see a doctor right now, and I don't know, he's real bad. He could barely walk down and down while we were talking. He called her and told her they couldn't find no tumors in her. And I said, there you go. That's how good she was on her, with her energy. Yeah. And then final one, raise the dead. We were we were at the same place, Shreveport, and a man, uh, I don't know, she, I don't know how old he was. Decided to come shopping. We're, we're at a dollar store for something right quick. Water, I think. And that old man just literally walked by Leslie and says, oh. And, you know, she's not afraid to talk to people. She says, how you doing, sir? I says, oh, I'm going to come shopping and get my groceries and go home. So okay. And they just collapsed in front of her. She said the buggy went. She didn't go, he didn't go anywhere. And it's like him falling over. So she grabbed him. She's a strong lady. She, she used to be a fitness competitor, so she mm -hmm. was a, she was number one ranked in IBFF, so she was a strong lady. So she grabbed him, put him down. They called the paramedics, fire department. They came. They put monitors on him. And when that man flatlined, the paramedics just looking at you, trying to figure out who's going to defibrillate the heart and everything. They're getting it ready and all this kind of stuff. She said, wait. She looked at that man and says, in the name of Jesus. Wake up. And that guy <gasps> got up, started taking a deep breath. Who, who, what am I doing here? What am I doing? Why am I take this off of me? Uh, I come here to shop. What, what are y'all doing? You know, he flatlined 18 inches on the monitor. And she woke him up. Hmm. And I said, You're the one. You're the one. You know, I'm glad I'm training him. And so, you know, she's done a lot of things, you know, and, you know, yeah, those are things that we have, we just have to be awakened to. That's the and thing this, that I, I noticed that as I started like getting out of the organized religion and just going out on hikes and going to these like uh, locations that are considered like special or sacred locations. And I was doing, I found myself taking my shoes and socks off and 
sitting on the rocks and putting my feet in the dirt and walking around. And then it was like taking my radio or taking an antenna and retuning it. It was like my entire awareness, my perception, my understanding of reality and myself. I started having like visions and understanding about like what we've talked about that these ancient frequencies that, that these people understood and used as a part of life. And now all of that stuff, you know, these groups try to kind of hide and control and sell us as prescriptions or as organized religion or as all sorts of stuff that really is, is just free within nature if we go out and reconnect with it. You know, and we've been talking a lot about that. Yeah, well, a lot of these, again, um, you know, I tell people, I say, read Second Peter chapter 1, if we are like Jesus. We are like him because, you know, Jesus spoke alchemy too. What does he mean by you are the salt of the world? The salt loses flavor. He's no good to the world. Salt yeah. is body. And then what did he say? Let your light shine. You know, above all things, a light cannot be hid, you know, in a bush. You know, that means that if your light is bright and shining and you're feeling good, you're feeling wonderful, sanctified, walking around, ain't nobody going to hurt you because your aura is so tight. You know, your energy is up 432 hertz, which is the miracle tone mm. that the dark cannot penetrate. The dark cannot penetrate. When you're all fired up, ready to go, ain't no, you know, and... A lot of people say, well, how do I get that? I say, say, okay, if you ever go to a revival and they get you so fired up, you're dancing, talking in tongues, and just having a good time, speaking light language and all that, I guarantee you Satan was not even around near near you anywhere. That's how you should live every day. Every day. And you will see a change in your life. You know, and they they look at me like, why are you always so happy? What kind of drug are you taking? I said, drug from the father. You know, I know who he is. I I know I want to be there one day. So I'm going to do what he tells me. And a lot of these gifts that people say, how do I get, how do I, well, master alchemy that we teach, let you harness your energy because we're going through the vibration. You know, the vibration, like I say, your um, your voice. Right now, we're in the Blu-ray chakra, which mm. is your voice, voice. And they say, well, why are we on Blu-ray chakra? Because after the transformation, you got to watch your portals, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, your ears. They're all connected to your brain. How? If you see something nasty, your brain's going to receive it. Your body's going to react. Smell something nasty, your brain's going to get it. Your body's going to react. Mouth, same way. Hearing, same way. So that's why you got to protect your portals. Well, the Blu-ray chakra is is the vibration, which is your mm-hmm. voice. And your voice is the makes the vibration. And like I tell people, you got to watch what you say. All along, I've been taught, be careful in how you speak. You don't want to hurt a person's heart by your voice. And I said, how in the world are you going to do that? Well, I learned that you're either speaking white magic or dark magic Mm -hmm. on people. You know, white magic is when you're praising a person. Oh, man, you look great. You look great. No, man, you look so super. I mean, golly. And and you, you, you can fire them up to where it makes them feel good. You know, when somebody compliments you, you know, it makes you feel good. But if somebody goes, oh, man, what, what what happened to you, man? Who rode you over? Or what you get run over by, you know? You're going to say, oh, oh, I thought I was feeling good. But, you know, they're going to bring your energy down, your vibration. When your vibration is low, and that's when the dark can penetrate, you know? Yeah. So, and we, you know, the dark don't want this body. It's what's inside the body they want or outside the body they want the spirit they want the spirit because that's infinite being the body is just temporary on earth you know we're just here on earth and when we die we either go to the next dimension or in heaven Hmm. so 
you know, that's what they want. We are farm for our essence, you know, and that's where, that's where I find out that a lot of things in the ne negative world, that's all they're doing. You know, the higher uppers, when I, I'm not afraid to call them out, the Illuminati's, you know, they constantly are sucking our energy. And a lady asked me yesterday, what do you, why, why, why are they trying to get rid of the population and all, and, all, and all this? Why are they trying to do population control? I said, well, in the beginning, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, you know, I think it's a Nephilims and a Anunnaki saying, let, they went up to whomever, to the Father or whomever, they went up to a God and asked them, let us make an image of ourselves. Well, they were, Highly technology, smart, and everything. And when they created the two, they said, wait a minute. We cannot let them go because, you know, they're too smart. So what they do, they put them in the, they put one of them in the Garden of Eden. The other one went up uh, and asked the God not to go in the Garden of Eden. So but anyway. The one in the Garden of Eden, what's the number one rule that they got? Do not eat from the, the fruit. knowledge. Yeah. So, and they were just out wandering around, just having a good old time, going old time until they bit into that fruit of knowledge. Then when they woke up, they said, hey, we're naked. Oh, no, we're naked. You know? So, now, they created us to make us slaves. The Anunnaki's and Philadiums, they're Robots, you know, and all this, whatever. But now we're creating robots to do the work for us. <laughs> right. We're kind of almost doing the same thing. Yeah. 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 Greg, was, is, is that fit within the, the teachings and your upbringing that there is these other entities like Enki? And oh, yeah. Enlil? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe inform yeah. people on that because they, they want to see people like, oh, Native Americans have this set of beliefs and it has to do with star people. But you... Uh, you learned I mean, different. That the 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 if you ever go, you know we have kachinas that are twelve foot tall, demigods, right? You know the shalako, they come once a year. You know we have a kachina that's a serpent. You know, we have a, and we have a kachina that took care of us in the great flood. You know we have a history of great flood. You know, we we do a lot of esoteric, you know, trips to the Grand Canyon to where we migrated from to be to do speak with the ant people and the mantis. You know, and it's different. Mm -hmm. I've been on that trip. You know, and to meet to meet the ant people and the mantis people at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, they're the ones that are in the underworld. They're the one that stuck us in the underworld. Because if you look at the migration story of our migration story, uh, we, not just Zuni at the time, but we came out of the underworld. And we split so many different directions. That's why I believe that, you know, there's some natives in, in uh, Mexico that are same as we are. We're called Zunis. They're called Zunigas. Mm -hmm. Because when the Mexicans first met them, they thought they ran into Zuni because of our same characteristics living. So they, oh, they're Zuni people, but they weren't. They're in Mexico. Mm -hmm. You know, we're up in, you know, up north. And so we're Zunis and they're called Zunigas. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these things that when we are taught about our history. Now, in our pictographs, there's some, I always wondered about, there's several of them I've seen where a person is standing and then there's a zigzag to a star. And right behind it, it's like a, like a flying saucer, just, just like a little like a spaceship yeah. right behind it. 
And to me, I believe that that somebody had witnessed a UFO or actually encountered them to where, like I said, there's like a human shaped body zigzagging to a star, and there's a there's a like a alien ship behind it. Yeah, you know, and I'm you know you can't. People said, looked at me, says, "Oh, he was a stargazer." He was it. I said, "No. Why does why are Zuni prohibited looking up at the sky, sky at night?" You know, a lot of people, you know, I've talked to in Zuni. I that, didn't. I didn't know that Zuni are taught not to look up at the stars. Yeah, they really? said somebody's going to look down on you. Well, who's that? Somebody, the aliens. Huh. The aliens, oh. the the star people, right? Star people going to look down on you. Star people, and star child on Earth, are different. And I guess, like I said, back when I was two years old, I guess when I was abducted, you know, I became a star child because I was different. I was the oddball of everything. In in school, I was a nerd. You know, I didn't pay attention to anything. I got involved in band, but whatever I did, I was good at. I was good in school. I mean, show me, you know, mathematical equation. I'll break it down for you. Show me chemistry equation. I'll break it down. Chemistry and math was my subject. You know, I I love breaking down those chemicals. You know, I, that was my thing, you know. And I studied so hard on that. And so, you know, when I joined the military, I uh, I got I took the ASVAB test and I only missed two wrong. That's it, two. Hmm. They want me on this, 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 this. They want me to put me in a nuclear cell program. I said, no. I don't want to go underwater <laughs> for nine months to a year. No. <laughs> right. You know? And I fought my way out, out of that crazy stuff that they want me to go into. But, but then I, I didn't look at myself as like that. I just looked at myself as I'm great. I'm just, you know, and... Still today, you know, uh, people say, why are you always happy? Why are you always this? Why are you, are you judging me? Don't, don't. <laughs> right. That's just my lifestyle, you know? Yeah. And, and in 2017, I had a real successful business for about 37 years. When I, when I woke up, finally woke up permanently. You know, I've always been awakened, at, you know, when I was growing up. But when I finally woke up, I called all my managers in. I said, um, do you have a key to your office? Usually that's my nice way of saying you're fired. If I take the office key away from you, you're fired, you know. And I said, uh, yeah. Uh, they started taking the keys off the ring. I said, no, you didn't hear me. Do you have keys to your office? I said, what do you mean? He says, I quit. Y'all can yeah. have the y'all can have the business. Y'all know how to run it. Y'all know everything about it. You might as well own it. I have businesses in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Arkansas. I just let them have it. I walked away from it. Hmm. So I'm only a phone call away if you need me. You know. And they could not believe it. You know, so but and they got it. They're doing you good. You made, made that shift in order to devote your life more to restoring some of these teachings and things? Yeah. I left home and I left with two pairs of pants, three shirts, some underwear, toilet dry, and socks, and, you know, a little suitcase and $100 in my back pocket. I, I sold everything. Oh, why not? Give everything away. Cars and all. I walked out with $100 in my back pocket with that little bit of clothes. You know, I still got that $100 in my back pocket. I always have a roof over my head. Hmm. And I always, you know, all this people, people say, wow, Greg, you, you know, you're doing this. Why don't you come stay at my house and I, I'll take care of you now? Well, I'll be here. That's why I say I'm nomadic. Sometimes I'm here in Texarkana, sometimes in, in, uh, Lone Oak, Arkansas, sometimes in Little Rock, sometimes all the way out to, you know, North Carolina. Hmm. You know, I'm wherever I'm teaching. I'm always, and right now, 
to the natives, I'm teaching modalities of ceremonies. You know, like, like a lot of the Cherokee people, you know, during the Trail of Tears, the young people ran off in the mountains. Well, the elderly had to walk the Trail of Tears. And when they walked, of course, they had the knowledge. And when they passed on, they took the knowledge with them. Hmm. So when they finally came back together, there was no elders to teach them, teach the young people. So now they're showing initiative to start learning it, hmm. start, you know, start and all that. So I go out there and I teach them the modalities of a lot of things. And, you know, they enjoy that. They enjoy that because, you know, and, and not only to the Cherokee people, uh, a lot of these new age healers, you know, the, the Reiki masters, I have four of them come up to me and says, look, I don't know what's wrong. I'm always sick. I can only do three people at a time. I said, well, what, how do you do? Well, I just do this. I said, how do you protect yourself? All oh, these crystals that I got. How do those crystals protect you? I don't know. They just told me that it's supposed to be protecting me. Well, if you don't know, how's it going to protect you if you don't know? Or all this. Mm -hmm. Well, I break things down when I teach. Like when I teach about smudging. Why do we use sage to smudge to cleanse ourselves? Why do we use an eagle feather? Why do we use abalone shell? I break all that down. What if sage is not available? Is there a substitute? Yes. Mm. You know, in our medicine well, Native American medicine well, there are four colors, white, yellow, red, and black. I know there's others that just like to make their own colors, but really white, yellow, red, and black is the true colors of a medicine well. You know, why? Because, you know, white is north, you know, which is the cold part. And east is yellow because when the sun rises east, red is south, which is earth. White, I mean, black is west, which is water. Water is spirit. Earth is, you know, red. Uh, yellow is uh, fire. And uh, white White is air, you know, because, you know, we always talk about how, how it all correlates. Well, you look at the elemental square, the circle, medicine was a circle with a plus sign on it. Right. That's the balance, balance cross in that, that plus sign. If you look at Jesus's old pictures, He's got a halo on his back. With the with medicine wheel cross. behind him. Yeah, yeah, with a cross. That's yeah. the balanced cross. But after his crucifixion, that cross got an extended leg on the bottom. And if you fold that cross up, it becomes a box. <laughs> That's true. It does. It folds up into a box, yeah. Huh, I've never thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom extended out does. Yeah. It would fold up into a cube. Yeah. Uh, so, so they keep you in a box. That's what religion does. Keep you in a box. They only teach you halfway. Right. They teach you the whole thing. And, and I tell people, I said, remember the gospel is father's love, mercy, and peace. If you go to a church and they start fear mongering you, oh, you're a sinner. You need to go to, you're going to go to hell. You're going to burn up in hell. <laughs> And uh, let me pray for you, and I will say, I looked at the one priest and I, a preacher, and I said, why do you have to pray for me? Well, I am I am the connection to the Father. I said, I got my own connection. Let yeah. me ask you a question. I said, what's the first thing that happened when Jesus said he is finished and gave up the ghost? Oh, uh, there was earthquakes. There was a terrible storm. I, I said, no, 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 no. What's the first thing that happened when Jesus said he is finished? The earthquake, the storm. No, 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 no. You're leaving out the main thing. What does it mean when it says, I look at the chapter, you know, and it's opened it up. The veil of the temple ripped, ripped. from top to bottom. Yep. That means it's we have open. Yeah, it's open. That's I've tried. I've had that argue, I've had that discussion with so many people saying that that moment represents that it's open and free. 
we can people can it's no people longer can. it's no longer kept under the pyramid or behind the veil it's open yeah that's why that's why when jesus was asked about the, the law which one of the commandments is important love father with all your heart with all your mind all, love your enemies love what about the third one there's no third one that's why i'm here hmm. no he didn't i mean he, he's but then again he said i'm not here to change the law right i'm just here to live it so you can understand it and a lot of you know i you know I, i'm not dogmatic on religion but i do believe in the father i believe jesus is the ultimate divine master because there are a lot of divine masters like buddha Hare krishna gandhi and all that but what? And we've Jesus. talked we've talked about how Jesus went to Egypt and went to Tibet and he became a Buddhist monk and he learned all those esoteric yeah. secrets and those were known all over the world. It wasn't just him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And 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 see, the reason why I say with Jesus is that he's the only, only divine master that exposed the dark. That's why. And what we got going on right now. The dark is rampant. Oh, so, yeah. But my main thing about teaching and starting this Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance is that I'm seeking. Like in our blood, in our body, we have 1% white blood cells. Out of millions and millions of red blood cells and everything, 1% of it is white blood cells. That white blood cells are the one that heals your illness, your infection, your wounds, and everything. So my thing is that if I can teach everybody what I know, I can come up with the 1% blood cells of Mother Earth and we can heal Mother Earth. You know, I've thought and wondered if maybe uh, UFOs or the star people, extraterrestrial intervention at some level is almost like a cosmic type of white blood cell that comes and wakes people up. Well, or... they're, they're, they're interfering <laughs> because they don't like it when the atomic bomb goes off. Right. And they're, they're, I, I, I know they're saying, oh, we spot this. They're a lot smarter than we are. I mean, I'm sure if whomever sends off the first nuclear bomb, it's not going to work when it lands because they'll dismantle it before it gets there. That's how fast they go. Yeah. You know? So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about what's going on out there. I'm not. You know, sir is going to do this, sir is going to do that. Did you know our body has enough energy to light up a whole city? Right. Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of people say, how, how, how? Don't say how. Just accept it and go with it because, I mean, when, when I teach about mind over matter, I had a lady says, look what I learned. And I said, what's that? Got a fork. He said, fill it. I said, yeah, regular, nice. Put it in her hand. Beer, watch that fork, girl. You know. <laughs> and I said, wow. He said, you're good. He said, yeah, can you do it? I said, put it on. I try to straighten it up. But, you know, when you bend over mat and try to straighten it up, it's not going to be a perfect shape like, like it was when you first got it. So, But it came back up. Hmm. It's just, oh, you're that strong too, huh? It's not strong. It's not being strong or anything. It's just controlling your mind over matter. Full right. hot. Full hot. You know, change, taking that universal energy. Because when the dark inverts it, you know, when the dark inverts it, I've seen where they, underneath the house, there'll be a shrine. The mm -hmm. first level of the house is going to be a floor. They're going to put a rug that has a star on it. Because each point of the star, there's going to be a witch or a warlock sitting there on the point of that star. In the middle, is going to be like a little round table. And on that little table, it's going to be a box. And on that box, they're going to put an object right there. And then when they reverse their chant and whatever, their energy, the thing on that box, the Minotron cube, is going to dissipate that object. Hmm. When the object dissipates, then they send it to a person they're trying to hurt. Right. And it's going to be like a fishing line going to that person. And when it gets in him, it's going to hurt them to where they're going to get sick. They're going to feel down and everything. It's going to lower their energy, their vibration. And that's when they, with that line, they're sucking out their essence. But that's gotcha. where, that's where the native 
or any kind of person that any shaman that could do psychic surgery come in and take that object out of that body. It's it's, it's literally out. like a form of indigenous uh, alchemy that's been going on. Yeah. For a long time. Do you think that these things have just been lost or what happened? No. Well, yeah, yeah. It's been lost. And all these things, this full heart and all this stuff that I'm teaching about, psychic surgery, actually, actually came from Egypt, came from ISIS. Thoth taught ISIS. ISIS, again, came like Jesus, went all around the world. Because back then they could fly. Look at Horus. Horus had wings, right? Uh, Isis and Isis and Osiris' son had wings. He could fly. They could fly back then. So I'm sure Isis had wings too. And f- probably flew all over the country, all over different continents. Teaching. You feel, is that why you think some of the carvings of these entities and star people on the petroglyphs they look the same all over the world? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they communicated the same thing. You know, it's all the same thing. Wow. You know, I've seen seen the petroglyphs in India. I said, no, we got the same kind. You know, we have the same kind. And I've seen some in Africa. Same thing. You know, Mount Kenya that, has, has some beautiful, beautiful petroglyphs. And they they same thing as, as, as we do in Zuni or in Hopi or the some you saw. You know, that's why I could interpret it exactly what it means. You know, I told you about that Merkaba, those the blue and red kachina with the Fibonacci circle. Those two little people on the bottom were the ant people. One looked like a mantis, the other one, you know, the, the big head with the two big eyes. Yeah. yeah. Mantis. You know? And the red painting you saw on, on one of the hillside, mm-hmm. yeah, the Spanish probably came and saw something like that and had to draw it on there. So they can remember what they saw where. Or they're trying to pass that on to whomever. You know, because paint came with the Spanish. Hmm. Before Spanish, when the natives did made pottery, it was corrugated pottery. It wasn't painted. It's corrugated. Hmm. After the Spanish is when they brought the paint and they start painting the pottery pieces. Started doing all the little lines on it and everything. Yeah. Gotcha. Put okay. animals on it and all that kind of stuff. And so you're so, saying before this, there was that time where the the mantis and the ant people or the star people, this whole, the world was just a different place. Then they, they were interacting directly with humans. At that yeah, time, interacting to teach them to survive. Gotcha. Every migration story you hear, they're going to have two gods that were leading them. Whether it's Hopi, Zuni, whomever has a migration story. Even even the Cherokee migration story. Have two gods that was leading them. I believe strongly that those two gods were Inki and Indale. Because every so often you see them drawn up as the two war gods. Yeah. Like Inki and in well, they don't I don't know what Inki and India look like, but they're always like a twins. It's they're the twins. same. They have they either have like the staff with the, and then they have the helmet or the horns. Sometimes they have the wings. Yeah. Sometimes they're coming through a circle or a hoop, almost like they're coming through a portal. Yeah. Or they or they're emitting the spirals, you know. Yeah. One way or the other. And uh it's that same pattern all over the place, whether it's Nevada, Utah. Arizona, all over, yeah. all the way up uh, over by the Grand Canyon and clear up by Skinwalker Ranch in Vernal. But you say you've been to even the Grand Canyon and you've had experiences where you've met them. So maybe you can talk about that a little bit too, uh, what that was like. And did you physically meet and see them or are we talking about a an esoteric how, vision? Esoteric vision. Okay. Let's, yeah. Do yeah. you mind talking about that a little bit? Well, the esoteric visit, visit with the ant people was kind of, it was brief. To me, it was brief, but they uh, they uh, kind of just basically confirmed what the Hopi prophecy was all about. Mm-hmm. And that was, we need to start teaching. You know, this, we're in an animal cycle. But being in an animal cycle is that we, they basically told me, we're in a, you, you all are in an animal cycle. You know, 
there's nothing. Now, if there's going to be a catastrophic event that's going to happen, we'll bring you all back in. But it's not. Those that are going to survive are those that are going to know how to survive. Like me. I can, I can kill an animal, process the meat, and have meat without a refrigerator for a year. I can can my own vegetables, grow my own vegetables, can it to where it lasts a year. And they'll, they're supposed to make it last season to season, so you always have fresh food and all that. And so, and I also can start a fire without matches, either using flint or using, using a cottonwood root with a branch. You know, I can start a fire with like that. Or, you know, I can cook, you know, everything. But there's a lot of things people don't know. I can tan leather, you know. I can build a house, you know. I can stay warm. I can, I can, I'll be all right out in the woods, you know, because I did that when I was growing up. I go, I go out to our ranch and I, Go up in the mountains, I'll be gone for a week, whatever. Then I'll come back, check in with my mom, go back out there again. That's why I said I was I was always a loner. Why? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it was they were teaching me. Whoever was teaching me, teaching me how to survive, and teaching me how to do this, teaching me about who I am. You know, fast and really like you say, when you meditate out there, it's more powerful than trying to meditate in the city. You know, you don't get city distraction. Hmm. But here, out there, you know, it's more powerful. You're more settled in the right mind, everything. In a city, you can't. You right. think you are, but you can't, you know? Yeah, and then when you're sitting in these spots where the same, you know, ceremonies or rituals have been done for thousands of years and you're looking at these glyphs, I mean, it, it it does affect you. It totally has an effect. It interfaces with you. And if you spend any time there, like you're saying, those frequencies, uh, even I believe changes the way that you're tuned, even the, the fluids in your brain and your spinal fluid and everything are suddenly in a different vibration or a different frequency when you're up in these places. And, uh, and then when you start to tap into them and think about it, like you were t- talking about the uh, what is it? The the hoo ha? Is that what it is? Foha. Foha. Hoo ha. <laughs> Foha. 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 It's, yeah. It's right. When when I when I when when I teach that, and when a person experienced that, the look on their face are priceless. <laughs> it is. It really is. You know, the I remember. Leslie, you know, when I went through, when I got, when I, when I went through a a transplant, I was, I was down, you know, and her mama got sick. Her mama was just in excruciating pain in her stomach. And I said, well, I think it's your turn. She said, what do I do? I said, go get it out. And, you know, when, when I told her that, boy, she got fired up. She was ready. She was ready. You know, she was ready. <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to prepare you and you go. You know, she went in. And when she got it out, the look on her face was so like, like, wow, wow. And I said, that's right. You did it. And her mama you know, psychic surgery, when we do it on people, people actually feel it coming out of their body. You know, we've had several people tell us, you know, she does all the psychic surgery, and when she get it out, we'd have people say, wow, I felt something come out. I had a lady call us having a heart attack. I don't feel good. I'm breathing hard. I can't breathe. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just sweating. I'm this, I'm that. Uh, my arms feel numb. I can't do this. I, I said okay. Well, okay. So she did. She did on her. When she got it out, it was, it was a 
Claudia Arter, a fat piece, I mean, a, a fat actually came out of her artery. Hmm. And when she said, Mo, I felt that come out. Whew, took a deep breath, says, I feel good. What'd you do? What'd you do? You know, he said, I took this out, showed it to her. Piece of fat, about that long, but, you know, just hmm. enough clunked artery. And that's what's causing a heart attack. And when he got it out, she, he goes, wow. Wow. I felt that. I feel better. And I said, there you go. You know, people tell us that. Yeah. You know, and what you're saying, Greg, is that there's a, there's a, a way that reality works and that our, that we can, <laughs> that we can actually connect with, the earth and with the universe that we have either forgotten or lost connection with in a way that to where Bingo. we really don't need all of the, the medicine and the systems that these big organizations that try to shove in our faces and sell us that puts us in like a maze that we have to run around constantly that we never get out of like the Truman show, right? Like we're yeah. become codependent upon uh, all of their pills and their cures and their, all of their ways, but really you're talking about connecting with reality itself at, at its purest essence. And that, that, well, it's just like when COVID is a part hit. of who we are, it's what we're made of. Yeah. When COVID hit, I got a small group of people that didn't believe in it. And I said, look, put your mind to it. Yes. Our father's more powerful than that microscopic thing. Keep that in your head. Father is more powerful than that smart microscopic germ. You know, we refuse, we all refuse to take a shot. We haven't. Now they snuck one on me, but that was it. I got one COVID shot. So yeah, I'm me too. I got I got one. That's it. <laughs> and after that, I said, no, 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 no. When I really they want to give me a flu shot? No. They're going pneumonia shot? No. Well, since the, since you're a transplant, you, your immune system is low, so it's not low. I haven't caught a cold yet all winter long. You know, I've been around people that had COVID and everything. I didn't. Craig, when I started doing what like what we're talking about, like in my own life, I'll tell you, I've lo I lost. I mean, I've done other things like uh, you know, I exercise and try to eat healthy. I do all the practical things, but I lost 175 pounds. I have all kinds of chronic back pain and, and honestly like doing yoga and meditation i never go to the doctor never get sick hardly ever have any problems losing weight my mental health is great uh even when i do have issues my ability to deal with it is completely different and not only that i find myself finding more friends that are on the same path like you that are in the same realization and synchronization where it's almost like there's an awakening of people that are coming to learn this stuff that are realizing what we were taught all our lives growing up. A lot of that was a lie, yeah. <laughs> a designed lie in order to keep these truths from us. And unless you kind of go out like I did, I stumbled into this stuff, but like you were brought up in it since you were earliest memories as a, uh, in the medicine man community and in the, by the elders around you teaching you all of this stuff. And so it's just been a way of life. But for people like me, maybe other people watching this show, it just sounds like magic to them. You know, they just don't even fathom it. But well, that's, that's, that's basically why I am here. That's my mission to open up that magic in you. Yeah. Cause you all have the ability to do what I can do, you know? And that's why I started teaching master alchemy because alchemy is basically the symbols that are more powerful than we realize, uh, like the Merkaba, you know, fire, water, you know, when, what does it mean? Fire is, you know, fire is energy, water flows. What, is, what does it mean flowing? Emotion. So when, when, when the dark wants to, in the medicine well, fire and water, you know, they're all on top of each other. So on the female side is water spirit and when when the dark wants to attack you it tries to attack you on your weak point so when it when you know fire and water you put it together energy motion 
emotion. So they work on your emotion. Mm -hmm. So they get you down so we can work on you. But if you keep your emotions up with that, you fire, keep that fire going with your emotion, they're not going to mess with you. Mm. You know, I mean, it's, I it's think, old. Greg, people are going to be shocked. I think that you're, you're raised as a, as a Zuni medicine man elder. The fact that you're even talking about things like, like Jesus and alchemy, you're talking about doing, uh, you know, energy healing and, tra you know, transmuting and manifestation. I'm using different words, but people I think are going to be surprised as a native American elder that you're okay with all of these things. And that it's like a time to, uh, that it, it's okay to discuss and that everybody needs to realize we're all talking about the same things. Well, I, 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 I do it because I'm open-minded, Yeah, you know, and, 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 you know, like, in the military, in any kind of training you do, before they will even train you, they break you down. Even in the dark, the luminized, going through a Masonic initiation, you know, they put you through an apprenticeship program, and then at the initiation, they scare the tar out of you to where you're going to keep that secret that they teach you. Well, in the military, you go through what they call one well, five stand tall. I mean, they tell you do this, do this, do this. And two things by understanding the command of your command, whoever's above you, and doing it, no matter how hard physically you can't do it, everything, but you're still hearing that command come on, do it, do it, do it. You're going to try your best till you break down. Now, when you break down, that's when they transform you. They start teaching you to be a military, to be a machine gun holding something right. to go out and kill, kill, kill. Right. You know, they, they transform you after you break down. They cannot break. And and, and before you gave them broke, broke down, the other military people are going to see that you're not working as a team. You're not, that's why they call you all Burger King. I said, Burger King? You say, yeah. Because they'd like to have it their way. But once they break you down and reprogram you, you start programming to their way to where you're not broke, you're not, you're not a Burger King anymore. You, you follow their commands. You're a team worker, team build, team building. That's how they do team building. Hmm. Now, as far as that the instructor telling you what to do and you're still doing it, that's how you operate the dark. You tell that dark. What to do. Don't let him tell you what to do. Don't be mm -hmm. afraid of him. You know, tell him. You know, I've seen this one, you know, guy that was doing a, uh, I guess, what, what would you say, um, taking the demons out of a body. You know, this this girl had a demon in her. Uh, exorcism? Yeah, exorcism, yeah. yeah. And, and, and a demon keeps... The little girl coming to say, I'm going to hate you. And he's standing there right there saying, Satan, get out of her. Get out of her. I mean, he's talking to a demon, not to the girl, but to the demon. And that girl kept saying, oh, I'm going to hate you. And and he's talking to Satan, but that girl just walked up to tap. See, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, but he didn't feel it. So he just kept on talking to the devil, devil, devil. And the girl decided to take off. He said, stop. The devil stopped. Get back over here. And that girl came all the way back. He said, now, get out of her body now. And keep, or I'm going to put my power in your, in, in, in the head of her, and you don't have a choice. In Jesus' name, get out. And, you know, but my point of this whole thing is that, is that no matter what the demon tried to do, he could not overpower that man because his vibration was higher, and he knew he can control that demon. So he would tell what to do, and that demon had to do it. That demon had to do it. And that's right. what they do to you in the military. They tell you what to do. And even though, you know, he's a stranger, you have to do what he tells. Because he's higher ranked than you are. I got to do it. I got to do it. But you're not even thinking beyond, well, he's just a human like we are. Why is he telling me what to do? We're all equal. You know? Yeah. So that's where the transformation happens. If they break you down and redo it. And, and, you know, the dark, 
That's why I tell them, don't be afraid of the dark. You know, don't be afraid of it. You know, we've, we've, I'm not afraid. I, you know, I, I do exorcism, but you know, I don't, I don't, if you look at a lot of the exorcism in movies, the priests usually argue with the devil. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Don't give him that time. Yeah. Because eventually he's going to overpower you. You know, just understand two things. Jesus gave us a direct commandment to remove all dark spirits. Remember Matthew 10, 7, 9? Remove all dark spirits. And Jesus said, in my name, Satan has to flee. You got to remember that. That's your power. He giving you a commandment. No, he was talking to his disciples. Well, if you're doing Jesus' work, what are you? His disciple. <laughs> Yeah, and even if it even if it's just an understanding of how the belief in your own self yeah. uh, or the the idea of dispelling the fear and having having that energy within yourself to raise your own vibration up in and of itself like we were talking about creates that sphere, that energetic bubble around you instead of it being flat and collapsed where you're full of fear and paranoia and you're uh, within your own head, suddenly you're confident, your chakras are raised up, your alchemy is in alignment, your thoughts, emotions, your feelings, your actions are all in this harmony with this universal purpose of just having a good integrity and good intentions. And that just penetrates through all of that, like and through any types of those experiences, whether you yep. perceive them I as mean, alien or demonic or whatever. Uh, that I, um, seems to be the case. You got to be open-minded not to judge also. Yeah. You know, I mean, we all have our own faults. I mean, so, I mean, that's why, you know, our father created us and he, know, he already knows what we're going to do. When we do it, you know, ask forgiveness and go on. Right. And, and cause we, uh, again, Again, we're told in the Bible, live for today, not to tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own problems. Don't worry about the past because the past has already happened. Live for today. So that's 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 what I do every day. I, I wake up. Thank you. Another day. What you got in store for me? <laughs> but, I mean, people come to me out of, you know, out of the ordinary and just say, I need your help. What? You know, can you pray for me? Uh, I will pray with you. You know, you know, I'm not gonna pray for you, but I pray with you. You know, and I tell them about you know why I pray with them because they have the same power. Why can't you ask the Father yourself? Why do I have to ask Him for you? If you, it, it's more better if you ask Him yourself because He's He's working to you, not me. You know, by the time it bounces off of me to you, it won't be as powerful. Mm. But if it comes straight to you, you're gonna you're gonna realize it's powerful. It's going to happen. You're going to feel it. You're going to understand it. That's you know? one of the things I like about your message, Greg, is that like instead of uh, and, and kind of the role that you're playing, instead of having the prejudice or the judgment, like you don't you don't care if the truth or the knowledge is coming out of Egypt or if it's coming from Tibet or if it's coming from your upbringing or out of the Bible or wherever, you've realized that your purpose in all of this is to basically take that truth at the core of it and bring that to the light. And what that is, is the message of people discovering who they are within themselves and how all of these things are accessed through yeah. their own self-awareness and their own alchemy and then regrounding and reconnecting with that in, in a, in a pure way and natural way. Yeah. That's basically what I am trying, I guess in a roundabout way, I am teaching that. Teaching you to self-empower yourself to where you do have that power like I do. You know, you do have the power like I do. You know, I mean, when, yeah, now come psychic surgery, that's different. You know, you haven't learned it yet, but, you know, it takes, because one of the big things that I like to teach is, again, find out who you really are. Look at your strength. Forget about your weakness. You'll get to feel your strength, you know, and all this. And um, people say, well, your manifestation is stronger than everything. 
I said, because I don't manifest for a million dollars without having a reason why. Right now, I don't because I don't, I don't, I won't know what to do with it. It's all money. Yeah. You know, it's all money. I mean, what, I mean, well, God needs to get this guy. I said, why does, why does the father need that? He owns it. He created it. That's his. You don't need to buy it. Yeah. You know, he, there's no monetary value in heaven. So, I mean, he, he created it. So it's his. Give it to him. You know. Right. <laughs> but funny. I, you know, I, you know, I can understand people do it for a living. Have to, you know, put, put. I mean, it takes money nowadays on earth. But you know, if you learn how to, I guess, the other part of me is going to try to teach to be self sufficient. You know, that's what I want to teach about be, to people. Be self-sufficient because um, people has lost self-sufficiency since I guess my, our generation or my generation was probably the last 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 of it that was taught to be self-sufficient. Yeah, you know because a lot of people can't do that. Can't be. Oh, well, I can go to Walmart. I can I can go to this. I can do that. I can go to Kroger's and buy my groceries. I don't need. I don't need. I don't need to do. Can't own food. Well, what if Kroger runs out? Yeah, that's yeah. the old saying. You can't eat your money. <laughs> yeah, what are you yeah. gonna do? And, yeah. and it's just like right now. My son told me, he "says Dad, I'm not gonna have an Easter egg hunt." I said, "Okay, I'm gonna have a potato hunt." I said, "Potato <laughs> hunt." He said, yeah, it's cheaper than eggs. Yeah, <laughs> that's true now, right? Yeah, all of that's part of the whole system when you realize that you don't even need it, that you can connect with the earth and have a relationship with it around you. Uh, you don't need all of that, the grocery stores and everything, you know. Same thing. I've been once I started meditating, now I'm I'm growing sprouts on my kitchen countertop. I've got, you know, I'm gonna be getting like chickens and quails. I've got goats out back and a whole pasture and like the amount that I get by on and live off of and how I live my life is completely opposite where I used to just have food storage, cupboards, this tons of just all this stuff. And now the ability to just feel relaxed and self-sufficient is just completely different. You know, I even have like a rain catch out back where I'm just catching the rain and to water my animals and like all this stuff you is know, like you know, people, people just mine, don't think, you know, a friend of mine, he, 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 he does this. Uh, he's got a big, metal sheet out outside and he lays it out out there and he says i don't know but why why but every monday morning he said every monday morning he'll go up there and get a like a little light feather duster and he'll dust that metal piece and all these little metal pieces get on that metal hmm. i said what is that is it that's meter dust. I said, really? He got a magnet, put it on there, and picked it up. Just dust that coming down from space, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And I said, okay, what are you going to do with it? I said, I don't know. Well, if you don't got nothing to do with it, give it to me, and I'll glue it all together and make a necklace out of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Did you? <laughs> you know, we, we all do a lot of things. Like, you know... Um, I was watching their survival. You know, people say, well, when you go on the desert, you're going to try. We, I remember as a kid, I was growing up eating cactus. Never hurt me. You know, never tastes bitter like they say it does, but never, I don't think it does. You know, right now the Catholics are eating a lot of cactus because they're in Lent. You know, Napolitas, Napolitas. I've eaten <laughs> so many cactus when I was growing up. I don't need to eat anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was but, just who you were, the way you were raised. Yeah. You know, as 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 I grew up growing up, you know, I I I was told, you know, does your does your stomach hurt? Drink this. Does your stomach or do you have a headache? Drink that. Put this between your cheek and gum if you I I have so much herbal knowledge that you know that I'm trying to teach that also. But I'm just one person. Yeah, I, I'm trying to prioritize what I need to teach, what I what I don't need to teach. You know, but you know, again, we're in the animal cycle, so maybe herbs is important because you know we were not just put on Earth just to say, all right, go on out, go on out. If you get sick, 
find a doctor. No, 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 no. We had herbs. We had herbs. We have herbal medicine. Right. So these herbal, I mean, one of the things that I'm almost saying you is my bear bomb. All these guys, three different, three ingredients, bear fat, lavender oil, pure essential lavender oil, and glycerin. That's it. Yeah. And you, when you put it on, you go say, well, wow. Yeah. What is this thing? You know, I've had, I had a contractor that got in a plane crash. Couldn't even stand up straight. And he was always talking to him. He was always leaning on something. And it's just, and um, I went to go bless a house when I got done. He said, you natives got any medication for for my back? My back is hurting. I can't stand straight up out of I said, okay. Yeah, I do. In fact, I got it right here. I gave, I gave it to him, and he put it on his back, put it on his knees. Then within five minutes, he was doing squats. His son <laughs> came out and says, Dad, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be doing that. He says, I am so happy. This medicine that I got, I don't, I'm not in pain. I'm, I'm feel good. I mean, I'm doing squats because I can do it. I'm, I said, when's the last time you seen me do this? He said, got up, stood straight up, walked off normal. And he, and he sounded just, well, he called the next day. He says, I want $600 worth of bear, bear ball. Yeah. <laughs> I said, wow, I have to get my bear hunter. Poor her, you know, um, she's, <laughs> she's a good bear hunter. She she gives me bear fat. She goes. She lives in Cherokee, North Carolina, and she goes bear hunting. Wow. So when when she gets one, she she saves the bear fat for me. You make some balm out of it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've uh, I've injured my back hauling firewood, and Greg's going to be sending me some of his uh, bear salve. To yeah, a lot of people. There. I've sent it all over the country. Believe That's me, awesome. everybody has used it. You know, people that have you know knee replacement, hip replacement, they put it on. They can walk. One lady said, I've never run, but when I put it on, don't hurt to her. I can go jogging now. I yeah, said, that's amazing. Okay, okay. Yeah, but you'll be your own testimony, you know. I right. I just make it and send it. Yeah. You know? I think that'd be awesome. I appreciate that. Greg, I think some people watching this might uh want to look you up or see how they can do your workshops or take your classes. And I know we've been talking a little bit about even having you come to Mount Wilson Ranch and maybe even do some, you know, teachings about the ancient alchemy and the, uh, and the frequencies and the healing. Set it up. I'll come down for a weekend and we'll have a 24 hour session class. No, no, (laughs) no. I, you know, I tell people like, like my alchemy class or the alchemy class we teach, we always tell the people, we said, okay, this class is going to be, Four weeks, two times a week. Um, it's you know six thirty to eight thirty in the evenings, uh, Central Standard Time. And I said we do it on Zoom, and we give you everything we teach. So, and then we're available in case you have a question. You can call us anytime. We'll give you our number and everything. But um, none of the classes has ever gone to two hours. It's always three hours and then some. Yeah. Plus we teach Socratic method. You know, we teach teach it, and, and towards the end, you know, they ask us questions, and that's where it goes further on down. Because when they, when they ask the question, you know, they, I mean, that tells us that they're really interested in it, you know, and it's a life changing class for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, Leslie Curtis, who is who is my my uh, my trainee, my replacement, whatever. She's a medicine woman. She's a she's a Cherokee. And Apache, she's a Cherokee, which is ancestral lineage from Geronimo. Geronimo was a Cherokee. Hmm. So, and now you look at her, she said, "Her now, don't worry about how she looks, you know." But she, she's she is the deal. I mean, she has learned it. She's done everything. I mean, she's the one that raised the dead. She's the one that spit the storm, healed the sick, and can do psychic surgery and everything like that. She's not afraid of the dark either. Yeah. Oh, she'll go after it. I mean, she always gets challenged, you know, you know, but she's strong enough to rebuke the devil. I mean, so, but anyway, we are Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance on Facebook. On Facebook, Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance. I think you can see it right here. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'll, uh, I'll put links down in the description below. Anybody can click and go check it out. And if we, uh, as we're getting ready to launch the new Mount Wilson Ranch website and update mine as well, whenever we have Greg come to Mount Wilson or, or come to where I live, I'm going to be doing other classes and things here uh, near my hometown, right by Zion National Park. Uh, if we have Greg come in, we'll feature all of that on the website so people can uh, make reservations and come stay and participate and learn uh, Greg's uh, ancient indigenous alchemy methods and, and classes and have these experiences for yourself. Yeah, if, 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 if um, you know, there's going to be, actually, I say two or three of us because, you know, Leslie has a son that travels with us because, uh, you know, but it's me and Leslie because, she breaks down the truth in man, like you, like you were talking about. She studied uh, alchemy and Drumvalos, um, um, Uh Is that Drumvalo Drumvalo Melchizedek? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And him. and so that's how you know she's learned the truth in man to where she breaks it down. Yeah. Why did Leonardo, you know, put all that stuff in there? They knew something back then. They knew what was going on back then. I agree. And, but it's just that everything is like Tesla. Tesla knew a lot of things, but he died of a broke man because they took you know everything away. Yeah, you know, it's you know, it's probably not appropriate to say, but the government is trying to control everything. They offered mm -hmm. me $175,000 to teach psychic surgery so they can document it. I said no. No, and then probably it. also to control you too, because once they give you the money, then you got to sign the contracts, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's what people don't realize is they even control the narrative and the story that the Native American people don't want these secrets to get out or that they don't want to teach the white man or whatever. But really, you're saying that it's really time for, for the world to heal and to learn these things. Okay. Yeah. So... We are Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance on Facebook. We are, I don't know if our domain is still up, but we are under redtailhawktribe.com. That's where you learn about Leslie and I and, and the classes that we teach. Now, we again, we teach classes, but we only take 10 students at a time because we want to be able to teach it one-on-one -on -one and give one-on-one -on -one attention, you know, because you cannot, we don't want to be like a classroom to where you're just a number. Right. You know, we want to be able to work with you, teach you, and all that. So, you know, we got we got a class coming up. It's not too late to join. And if we have more than 10 people in one class, we can always open up a second class. So just you can get a get a hold of us and uh join the Red Tail Hawk Tribal Alliance. And send me a message, or you can find me, Greg Yawaki, on Facebook. And friend me, and then you can messenger me on Facebook. Uh, or, you know, you know, just what you, what, however you need to get a hold of, you know. Um, we are on, uh, what was it? I'm trying to think about which web page to use. Well, you can use my Yahoo, basically. Yawaki at yahoo.com. Easy. And we'll respond. We yeah. give, we like to give one-on-one -on -one attention because that's the only way people learn, you know, if you get and, and important. So, I mean, we're here to teach. And when we do a workshop, we'll design a workshop for two days to where we come out. You know, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. And, I mean, we won't leave you hanging because, you know, even after the workshop, you know, I like to I like to just say, you know, I'm here. You have any questions? Let me know. I'll meet with you one on one to explain stuff to you. Or if you want to experience it more, let me know. I'll teach you how to experience it. You know, I'm a prove it man. Like when I teach you how to ground, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to ground to where you can actually feel it. You know, or feel your your energy, your aura, and I tell you how to use it. Tell you how to use it. Maybe maybe I need to sign up and go through your next class just so that I can understand what you're what you're doing and connect with it a little better. Yeah. It, it sounds amazing. I would love to do that. 
Um, I'm trying to think. Let me let me, let me look at my calendar right quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I think a lot of people, I'm going to put the links to all of this down on the description box below. So anybody interested in learning or being mentored by Greg, I think now's the time. If you've been just like me, dabbling in books or curious or trying to learn meditation and struggling, uh, if you're feeling drawn to go out and into these you know, ancient locations and study the petroglyphs, if you're feeling any kind of this, uh, I think that you will find some enlightenment and understanding if you're finding that you're not getting the answers in your organized religion that you were brought up in, all of those things, I think you'll find a, a much more holistic and unified approach uh, through what Greg and his colleagues are doing and what I'm also trying to help uh, spread as well. March 14th is our next alchemy class. Awesome. Well, that's coming right up. Yeah. In two weeks. Man, I might have to do that. So you're saying that, I mean, you're. what if somebody signed up for it Okay. Could they expect to yeah. out, out of the, the experience. Okay. Let me explain the class to you. In the class, yeah. we teach you and then we record it. And when we record it and teach you, at the end of that session, probably the next day, because we got to let it download and everything through Zoom. Once it downloads and everything, we we uh, send you the copy of the video that you, the class we just finished. Any homework that we give you, we send it to you through your email. That way you can have a copy. Of, download the video and copy it. And you have the class, you know, pictures that we use and everything, the whole nine yards. And a lot of our pictures have explanations on them. So, you know, it's just not going to say like like a Truvia man. This Leonardo da Vinci's Truvia man. This is, it's, it does this, this, this. And I tell you what the Truvia man is all about. Mm -hmm. But in the class, we break it down a little more. So you know what the Truvian man basically is when you get a copy of it. Mm -hmm. And you look at the class, you say, oh, okay, well, this, 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 you know. You know, but that's, we give you the class video, and then we give you the information that we taught out of. And at the end of the class, you know, in the beginning, we do an introduction. At the end, we do a post introduction, which is, the post is just basically going back over what we went through and to see if anybody has any questions. And, and to let them know that, you know, if you don't have questions now, you might come up with something later to where if you do, you know, we're still available for you because we got to keep, we, we like to keep our family close. We consider our tribal alliance family, even though we got 2000 people and all whatnot, there's enough of us to where we all can go around and explain to you. Well, if you really want to directly talk to me, you can, or Leslie, mm -hmm. you know, but you know, we do it all, all the time. Plus, you know, we um, we also, at the end of the class, we give you the whole curriculum that we taught out of. And again, all the videos of each class, there's going to be eight classes. You're going to get, and they're, like I said, two to three hour classes. And you're going to get all videos of them and all the information that we taught out of that class. All the information, you know, so you're going to get everything. And so, and the videos that we use to support what we're teaching, you know, and then after the class, this class will give you the tools of who you are and what you are, you know, your energy, your vibration, your chakras, and all this. I mean, we break it down. Hmm. Once we break that down, then if you want to, you can go into the mentorship that I go into where I say you learn you got the tools let's start using the tools to start digging mm. you know just use the tools that you learned you know so then you go on on going support and mentoring and do you ever actually take uh groups out to locations uh, yes i do, do i do i do um rex bear and i we were gonna go out to certain pictographs and all that kind of stuff we did have a trip plan to go out to Moab. There's a bunch of pictographs out in that area. Show the people what they mean. Explain to them. And I was going to go with them just to explain all that whatnot. And go to the four corners and have a ceremony of grounding. Hmm. And the four corners, the native says, that's the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And that's where the ley lines connect. And when you ground out there, woof, 
talk about. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think we, uh, I think it would be amazing if we're doing if we could arrange to do some of that. You know, um, you want to arrange it? Let me know at the places that uh, that I go to. That would be pretty amazing. So I'd I'd love to do that. Uh, Greg, we've been going almost two hours here. I think uh, it's going to be like trying to get a drink of water out of a fire hydrant for some people. It's a lot of information to <laughs> digest and realize. So I think what I think it would be awesome for people to look on their calendars, see if you can sign up for the workshops and and th- the classes that. Uh, the, the class is now again. The class is four hundred dollars, you know, because we got to pay all this Zoom and all that kind of stuff. But also, uh, Memorial Day weekend, we're having a tribal gathering, Red Hawk Tribal Alliance gathering. We're gonna have grounding ceremonies. We're gonna have naming ceremonies. We're gonna have healing ceremonies. Then for entertainment, we're gonna have a national recording artist, flutist, that's gonna come have a concert for us. And I'm trying to get a powwow group to come so we can have a powwow. And if you just have an itty bitty native in you and you want to dance, knock yourself out. Get out there and stop on Mother Earth, you know. She'll appreciate that. You know, keep her heartbeat going, you know. So beautiful. Th- this is gonna be a Gulf of Gorge in Hot Springs, Arkansas, the weekend of May, Memorial Day weekend, which I believe is May 27, 28, 29. Mm. You know, so plan on coming. I might plan on coming. You might see me there, Greg. I think that would be amazing to come and meet you and do all that. Yeah. Well, and you know, we got again. The sooner, the sooner we get people to sign up for class, we might even start sooner. You know, and this class we've taught all around the world. We taught in Egypt, India. I mean, Ser- Serbia, UK, Canada, Mexico. Hmm. We've had conferences in Hot Springs. Nashville, you know, so it's not not for us to get famous. It's just to for us to get the word out. That's our goal, right. to get this teaching out because, I mean, we could not ask for anything else. Well, I appreciate it. And I, I want to try and help you do that, Greg. And so we're going to do that with the message here. Anybody watching this that resonated with what Greg said today, try to click the links sign up for the workshops and the classes and share the video, share some of his work and get the message out there as well. And Greg, I think we need to do more of this, have another interview again in the future. And I we'll definitely get, we'll want to get more specific now to me, this was just a general, but we'll get more specific because I want to teach you about some of the phenomenal events that happens and why it happens and how it happens. And yeah, we didn't even touch on any of that. Did we? No. No. Yeah, the uh, this all the supernatural phenomena. Uh, the talking about the the star people, the ant people, the yeah. the actual connection with the petroglyph sites is all a whole separate conversation yes. that we just had to lay the foundation for yeah. today to understand. Yeah, the we just laid the foundation for it, and also, you know, I want I want also talk about you know everything you see, you know, is all control and how to get out of it, how to get yeah. out. The matrix, the matrix we're trapped in. Matrix, you know, which one going to take the blue or the red pill, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. It's so refreshing, uh, Greg, to talk to you and have, uh, have this message coming from you and being not alone uh, with me and my friends trying to share it. And the way that you put it together without prejudice from so many different sources is really, uh, really validating. And I think uh, something that people need to hear. So I want to thank you for your time and, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up today, but please guys check the links down below and we're going to have Greg back and dig really into the phenomena, the supernatural aspects of this and how they directly uh, affect you. But maybe you should take some of Greg's classes and workshops first to make sure that you're ready for such things, right? <laughs> well, so, <laughs> one step at a time. Oh, no, no. I mean, <laughs> again, when you take the master alchemy class, that's, we cover all that. Yeah. We cover all that because we break everything down. That I mean, from your essence, we are farmed for our essence, you know, mm. and and we tell you why and all this. We break that down, you know, and we, all these events that you know the dark. Why why is it so rampant? Well, we break it down. It's everywhere, media everywhere, and so we we break everything down. I mean, but like I said, it's a life changing thing for a lot of people. 
when yeah. they take these classes, they say, wow. You know, now I catch myself doing this. Now I catch myself doing that. I said, that's good. That's good. You got to protect yourself. You know, you got to protect yourself. Definitely. Because if you don't, who will? You know, connect yourself with the father, mother, you know, because we're here for them. You know, we're a heaven on earth. You know, well, so. hopefully we can bring that back a little bit, help people uh, get out from under that psychic matrix and their routines that they're trapped in and maybe reconnect and ground and tap into this kind of stuff. And Greg, thanks so much for all of your time today. Is there any last words or messages or anything that you want to leave with people before we go? Well, it's like, it's like my people used to tell me back, my elders used to tell me, when you put your hands together, that's you. Because there are 10 fingers and two, well, eight fingers and two thumbs. But when you grasp it together, when you grasp the knowledge, you're, you'll be more wiser, powerful, and how you, how you can be self-sufficient. Hmm. And that's what I want people to be. You know, know their power, be self-sufficient, you know, gain the knowledge to where they're not, they're out there. Because animal cycle, we got to survive. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's been wonderful. And I look forward to uh, talking to you more. And we're going to, when we get into that phenomenal stuff, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> I, will, I will show you. I will, I will teach you how to watch it. I think I would appreciate okay, that. Let me, let, me give, let me just close with a quick course on that. Yeah, please do. Please do. A lot of people, a lot of people say, how come when I watch TV, every so often I see something flash by, by the time I look, it's gone. Well, when you, when you look directly at it, your direct vision has to focus before you can see it. Hmm. It's like the UFO, going, they're gone, right? Well, the spirits are like that. They're gone. But if you're watching TV and you see something flash by, don't 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 look at it. He's gonna say, "Nah, man, did you see me?" Then go go again. And if you ignore it, he's gonna do it to where he slows down. Use your peripheral vision to see who it is. A lot of people don't use their peripheral vision, mm. you know. But if you continue looking at that and ignore that, it's gonna get mad and slower and slow. And when he slows down, you see who it is. Then you can say, "What do you want? Talk to it. What do you want?" He goes, "Oh, he saw me." And when they freeze, you can then look at it. I've done that on accident a couple of times. <laughs> 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 it would be nice to actually be taught like how to do that, Craig. <laughs> yeah. I that's, used to just, that's just one one little insert of about about stuff like that. I, I got I got plenty of using your aura to feel them. Mm. How how do you use it? You know? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so well, anyway, Carl. Hey, Greg. It's been, it's been wonderful. I loved every minute of it. It was really enlightening, and it's been a wonderful conversation. And you guys, make sure and subscribe, turn on notifications, go click the links to follow Greg's pages and check out his classes. And we're going to do a part two and really dig into more of the phenomenon now that we have uh, Greg's backstory and his experience to bring it up to now. And so uh, stay tuned and we will see everyone in the next one.